how rare is it to find a, a group of guys that can't be bought off? So the founders of our country, we're speaking to the United States, I'm speaking predominantly to Americans, you know, a bunch of guys who couldn't be bought off easily, right? And, or who just who wanted a country. They saw the wealth of the country as being more valuable than, than whatever a king could give them, right? Because you, you, know, you yourself were able to be kings on your own land. That was the whole idea behind America, was that you were kings on your own land. For, there's, a lot of, there's a misconception out there about the American dream. Let me try and clear this up. The American dream wasn't home ownership. That, that's a marketing thing. That, that came about with, uh, with, with bank lending and shit like that. The American dream is actually a little simpler than that. It's just not having to ask for permission to be human, nor ask for forgiveness. That's it. That's the American dream. And being able to actually own your property and own the fruits of your labor. Okay? So that was the American dream. Very simple. Right? So, it, you know, the idea of, well, home ownership. Well, home ownership, it was kind of a given because, you know, you would, you would have a piece of land and you would build your house. Right? I mean, you would build it. You and maybe, you know, your friends or your, your neighbors, your community would get together, you know, like the Amish do today. And you would build your houses. Right? And so that was kind of a given. But the idea was that you, could, you, kept, you kept the fruits of your labor. You know, if you did farming or agriculture or something like that, you could keep all of that wealth. And you, know, you could you know, will it onto your kids, presumably. Um, that, was, that was the idea. And so that's where the American dream stems from, is from something like that. As opposed to now where it's like, oh, what's been turned into this bizarre thing about just trying to make a bunch of money. And the money is printed from nothing. I still have a heart. This is the hardest conversation uh, to have with, with some people who just can't understand this. That I keep telling you guys, you are not financial geniuses because you got a banker to loan you money to buy a bunch of rental properties. Specifically the rental bros out there. You're, that's not financial genius. Do you understand that? That's not. That isn't, that isn't anything. That's just you had more to lose or they thought you had more to lose than they did. That's it. Remember what's the number one rule in banking? Number one rule in banking is make sure that whoever you're lending to has more to lose than you do. That's it. That's it. And so that doesn't take genius. That just takes being born into the right household, right? I know how a lot of you feel, and I'm gonna, let, me give, let me give you some empathy for you people who were born with a silver spoon in your house, who crawled your way out of the cul-de-sac in the upper middle class neighborhood and be, made something successful of yourself, right? Let me, let me just be sympathetic here. I understand that from your perspective, you started from the bottom and worked your way up and you, know, you, you want to feel as though you achieved something. And it, it makes you angry when you see people who actually did start from nothing, who actually do start from nothing, who you know, grew up in the projects, all that kind of shit, about as poor as you can be in, in, in the Western civilization, and then become successful. That really bothers most of you. I know it does. And I know it bothers you because it's like, well, okay, hold on, how the hell does this, does this, does this guy know more than I do? It's because I had, to ha I had to earn all of my experience. I didn't have somebody give it to me. My authority, the authority, because there's no authority above me. I, I recognize no authority above me. Let's be clear on that. None. Not government, not dickhead douchebag in, the, in office, not the next dickhead douchebag who wins the election. Well, I, don't, I don't recognize any of your fucking authority because you have none because most of you have never earned it. To be clear on that, most of you have never earned any of this shit. Why do you think the most billionaires can't tell you how they, how they did it? Why do you, where, like, think about it, where are the billionaires? Why are the billionaires not doing one hour or half hour you know, per week? They just do a video, right, where they talk about their, you know, some of the things they had happen in business and they learned this and they learned, why, where are the billionaires? Why, why, are they, why, are they, why are none of them doing that? Probably because they didn't learn anything from it. Probably because they got a banker to loan them a bunch of money and that's how they got rich. And they conjured money out of nothing. It's all fucking counterfeit. When you have an honest economy, all that shit goes away and most of these people get exposed for the frauds that they actually are. Well, they don't want to do that. I'm not unsympathetic to you. I'm just telling you that if you're in that situation where you crawled your way out of the upper middle class cul-de-sac and made something great out of your life, you know, like <laughs> there was a, an old movie uh, called Head Office or something like that. I had Rick Moranis in it or something. It was like, and one of the lines was like, uh, uh, the, the, the rich CEO, he's flying over in his helicopter and he says, you know, when I showed up in this town, I only had $62 million to my name and now I own all this. Like, you know, not $62 to his name, $62 million to his name or some shit like that. It was some, like, like just ridiculous shit like this, right? I mean, this is, this is how it's seen. So you've got half the country 
more than half the country now waiting for everything to collapse because it isn't working for them and it will shuffle the deck. And when you shuffle the deck, then you stand much, you know, like for example, back when I was, when I was a kid, I was hoping for Y2K to be a thing to completely like wipe out civilization altogether because that would mean that people who had skills and people who actually understood what they were doing, you know, would actually be very prosperous at that point. They would, act because they were actually doing the work, people doing the, all, the, all the fucking work would actually become successful. Another way of thinking about it would be like this. We've all seen those, those movie tropes or TV show tropes, they make fun of it all the time, where you've got the, you know, the, the end of the world is tomorrow at nine. And so quick, we need to load all the, all the people up on rocket ships and get them off world. And who are we gonna take? Well, and then it's always the, the, it's rich people, doctors and scientists and shit like that. And it's like, being the logical being that I am, um, my question is like, okay, so who precisely is going to build all your infrastructure when you get to your next world? Because none of you know how to lay a pipe. None of you know how to, how to TIG weld. None of you know how to do any, any, none of you know how to build anything. So who exactly is going to do this? Oh, well, the illegals. Oh, the illegals. Okay, from Earth? Like, <laughs> like, like <laughs> you have some idea how ridiculous some of this shit sounds, right? It's, uh, sci-fi for me is actually kind of a tortured re uh, relationship, you know, because I, like, I watch this shit, you know. Anyway, so, yeah, this is one of the reasons why so many people are very unhappy and they're waiting for the U.S. to die again. So it can possibly be re reborn. And, of course, the question is, is that how does it get re re reborn? I already covered that in the Texit video I did, like, what, four or five months ago. Like, you're talking about starting a new country. When you start a new country, you have to focus on one thing first, which is what kind of currency you're going to use. Are you going to have a hard currency or are you going to have this shit again? Because if you're going to have this shit again, you're just going to end up with the same shit. You're going to end up with a bunch of, a bunch of uh, entitled twats, claiming that everybody else isn't working hard enough for them. That's what you'll end up with. And, you know, so I think I said this uh, yesterday. I think I tweeted this out. It was something to the effect of, like, you know, I mean, the, 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 the right have this, this, this weird delusion of wanting people to be slaves who have the vision for themselves that one day they may become slave owners. And the left want a bunch of slaves who will just have their own slaves that's all paid for by the slaves. Like, you guys are crazy, both sides. I, I have no respect for either, for either side of this, you know, which is why one of the reasons why, you know, even though I have a lot of people on the right that follow me, there's a ton of people on the right to follow me, and they, they regurgitate my message and make it fit their narrative as opposed to, you know, actually listening to what the fuck I told them, which is like, dude, you guys are just as bad. You need to look in the mirror, but you won't because you're weak. It takes, a lot of, it takes a lot of guts to look in the mirror and actually point all that high power perception that you point at the left at yourself. It takes an enormous amount of, uh, of, of discipline to do that, and then you're going to find out you're going to lose all your friends, and nobody will have you on your fucking podcast anymore. Just so you know, that's what's coming. So there you have it.